I will remember this day forever. Uh, my son was about two years old at the time, so not yet ready for public school, but we're starting to talk about it, right? He's two going on three, and Kay had already been talking about like, you know, she wanted homeschool, and I was like, eh. And I'm working in a town where the town was Danbury, Connecticut. We're like right down the road from the hospital and sirens just going crazy, going crazy. And so we turned on the radio and it was Sandy Hook. Oh, which wow. was, oh. yeah, we were like two towns over from Sandy Hook and we just heard uh -huh. all day the hospital, the, the, um, ambulances and you can't live your life in fear and um, yeah you know i don't want to like tell people who are listening who are thinking about this or whatever that the only reason you should is that mm -hmm. but but there's a spectrum of danger in the world right take that spectrum of things bad things that happen to kids on in government schools there's a whole yeah. spectrum but more than just that and in fact i'm more afraid honestly of the damage that Today's episode of the Home Study Podcast, we have a fantastic conversation with Drew and Lacey from the Schoolhouse Life Podcast. As you can tell from that snippet, we're talking about homeschool. And it's something that we both feel very, very passionately about. We feel there's a lot of dangers in this world that our children do not need to be exposed to at a young age. And we're going to get into that. Of course, I already brought up the physical danger element of public school, but there's another danger. It's a more silent danger that our children will be exposed to, all of our children in public school. And it was a major concern for our family as well as for Drew and Lacey and led to both of our families deciding to homeschool instead of sending our kids to the government run schools. Now, before we get into this, I just have to say something with a message to address everyone out there. This podcast, no doubt, is going to ruffle some feathers. Every single time I talk about homeschooling, I wind up offending somebody. Let me start by saying this is not my intent. We obviously choose to homeschool our kids because we feel it's the best thing we can do for them. If you send your kids to public school because you think it's the best thing for them, great, we can disagree and we can still learn from each other. Tell me in the comments below or on the website if you're listening to the podcast version of this why you like using the public school, what you like about it, what are some good things to take advantage of in that system. If you send your kids to public school because you feel you have to, but you would rather not, this podcast will hopefully give you a few ideas on how you can eventually build a path out of public school for your children. And third, if you're part of a group like we are, who homeschools your kids, you're going to love this episode because there's a lot of alternative methods to homeschooling. Maybe you'll learn from something we do here in our homestead. You also will no doubt learn something from the way Lacey and Drew from Schoolhouse Life podcast, YouTube channel, and social media accounts uh, homeschool their family. We had a great conversation together. It's a little different format. We actually just have a nice conversation. It's not really an interview. I hope you enjoy listening to our story about homeschooling, their story, and please be part of the conversation in the comments below or back at the website if you're listening to the podcast version. It's okay to disagree. Let us know if you think differently. Just be polite. The world that we live in is a crazy place. This is a pandemic. In a toilet paper tussle. Inflation hitting a new... They are protesting. But you and me... We can make a difference by just starting a garden, harvesting rainwater, raising some meat chickens with a couple of friends. All these little steps, bit by bit, it makes life better for you, me, and our kids. So if you've wanted to start homesteading, or maybe just grow your homestead a little bit bigger this year, well, you found the right podcast. Cozy up, it's time for another episode of Homesteady. Today's episode of Home Study is brought to you by Cujo Yardware. If you watch our YouTube channel, you will see in all our videos all kinds of different things. You'll see cows, you'll see pigs, you'll see chickens. Sometimes we're outside doing some rotational grazing. Sometimes we're inside baking, making cheese, milking cows, all kinds of different stuff. Every single day, I guarantee you in every video, 
I'm wearing Cujo Yardwear. They have become my official uniform of homesteading. Cujo Yardwear started with a very simple goal. They wanted to make a work boot that had the comfort of like an athletic sneaker as we call them in New England, maybe you call them tennis shoes, but the durability of a work boot that you would see on a job site. I have been searching my whole life for this work boot. Cujo Yardwear Yard Shoe is the love child of a durable work boot and a comfortable pair of sneakers or tennies. When they approached me to sponsor this show, I told them I would not ever, ever take a shoe sponsorship without trying it for a year because I have been looking for years to find the work shoe that would last over a year despite my really hardcore homestead life. They said, we'll send you a pair, no problem, we'll reach out to you in a year. Well, it's officially been actually almost two years since they first contacted me. My Cujos are in great condition. I'm still wearing them. And they're now officially a sponsor of the Home Study Podcast. If you're looking for comfortable work shoes or amazing comfortable work pants, awesome clothing to wear while doing all your morning chores, I wear my Cujos every single day. I can't say enough good things about them. You'll see a link in the description of this podcast to Cujos you can get a discount. All you have to do is go to cujo.com, type in the coupon code HOMESTUDY, you'll get 10% off your order, and you'll support the Home Study Show while doing it. So check them out for your work boots, your work pants, and anything else that's coming out. Stay tuned. Drew and Lacey, welcome to Home Study. Thank you. Thank you. So excited to be here. Yeah, I'm really excited to have you guys. I was hap- I was really happy when you reached out to do a show together because I got to dive in and I've been following you guys on Instagram now since you reached out and seeing all the cool things you did or that you do. Um, <laughs> but when we were trying to come up with a topic for today's show, I saw obviously your, your guys' show is called The Schoolhouse Life. When I saw the word schoolhouse, uh, my first thought was like, oh, is this like a homeschool? channel Mm. and when you guys reached out we were originally going to talk homesteading in general and that's when i saw oh no you guys do you have cows and you have sheep and you're doing all sorts of homesteading things but then i saw how much of your life and your homestead is built around homeschool and that's Mm. why i was like oh man we got to talk it's it's august it's back to school season and i was so excited to get you guys on because i can tell you guys have like built your life around homeschooling I'd say that's accurate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the schoolhouse life is what it is. I think um, we started, I, well, I started blogging when the kids were kind of babies and it was called life as a schoolhouse, really with the idea that, you know, everything we do is an opportunity to learn. And Drew and I are kind of obsessed with trying new things. And I think that's what leads most people down the, the homesteading rabbit yeah. trail. Right. But, um, but yeah, I think when we early on in our marriage, we decided to, well, actually, probably right about the time we were going to think about going the, you know, public school route, the fi- the child was five, you know, it's like, what, what do we do? What do we do? Um, and homeschool seemed like a pretty natural fit. Um, but yeah, I think then we're like, well, let's try chickens as a homeschool project. And let's, you know, all of these things just kind of one spiraled into the, the next and the next and the next. It just I keeps think, going. Yeah, I think it was kind of like the idea of like, what better way to teach kids what really matters in life than have a homestead? So yeah. it was right. kind of like, you know, the two went together. And we knew ahead of time, I mean, even before we had kids, when we were first married, we visited a small goat farm and we're like, yeah, someday this is what we're going to have. And I think <laughs> it's so we, funny now because like we don't have goats. Yeah. <laughs> and I know often it's the same for you, right? Like th- that's, that's one of the reasons that I uh, started crushing on you guys on your podcast is like, I heard one of you guys was like, yeah, we banned goats from our yeah. farm. And I was like, oh, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, we, we I have a, a young daughter who get got the better of me, and they're back again. But oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I, I think that when you have kids, you're like, no, I don't like. They call goat kids kids for a reason because it's like having a whole another set of actual children. Right? Yeah. Oh so. man, that's so true. Yeah, it's like enough. Ca- I I have a thing. I say contain the chaos in the barn. I'll say this to the kids. Hey guys, contain the chaos, and I yeah. say it when the goat kids. And my human children are in the barn. <laughs> Guys, contain the chaos because they are yeah. so much chaos, especially when you combine the two. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Did you guys, were you guys both public school growing up? Yeah. Survived. 
yeah. survives. <laughs> what was your public school like? Because I know that's interesting when, when me and Kate talk about it on our end. But what, yeah, what was your guys' experience with public school? Well, I'll start. I think, you know, I grew up in New York State, which the school system there is very different than the North Carolina school system. Like, so I went there until all the way through middle school, and it was very much more of a private school situation. Um, we had all the arts. We had, you know, I, I there were like accelerated programs and no kid was left behind because I, there was a class of 150 kids tops, right? Like wow. it was just everybody knew everybody. It was a very, very small and intensive and nurturing environment. Um, and then we moved to North Carolina and I started high school and I, you know, as a teenager, you don't, you're not paying attention. You're just like, let me help me get out of here. Yeah, right. Get done as fast as possible. Right. <laughs> but looking back on my high school years is, you know, it's really, you just get swept under the rug. I went from 150 to 700 students in my class. So I was just a number and, um, it's a little even sad to think about. I enjoyed it because I basically just don't, took only art classes, but I don't feel like it geared me towards like, what do I really want to do with my life or, you know, gave me the freedom to learn and, and nurture the, the like unique things about myself. So, or feel confidence in them. So even though I took all those art classes, I was very uh, insecure about potentially following the path of art. Although I think they kind of in public school is the goal to tell you that, yeah, no, artists don't make money. So right. you can definitely yeah. not do that. <laughs> um, so I went and got a degree in something totally else, uh, something else that I didn't use. But anyway, so then, yeah, Drew, what's your story? Um, I, I feel like my early years of public school, I was just like trying to get by. Like, it's really funny. Like, I, I remember pivotal moments. Like mm -hmm. one was like I almost didn't graduate um, kindergarten because I couldn't jump rope. And like, I remember like my mom being with me in the driveway, like, you've got to learn how to jump rope. <laughs> like, it's such a funny thing now. Cause like, this, I can't like, imagine like my kids now, like being like, you're going to fail at life if you can't jump. Rope. Well, I mean, honestly, I wish they still use that. I, I'm sure 90% right? of the kids who get through kindergarten can't jump. Rope. Yeah. And then I went to like a magnet school that was like focused on math and technology in high school. And, um, I like, took like advanced mathematics but like barely passed those and then went on to college to do um art, art also yeah. so art that's art. where Lacey and I met yeah at, in art in college mm -hmm. but um I I did looking back at my public school experience it it did nothing but probably hold me back I, I think about like oh man what I, I could have done if yeah. I just stayed home with my mom holy cow yeah. and I think about like I I graduated college with a degree in sculpture but it, early on in like middle school, I took one art class and the art teacher told me that I should never pursue art. I was not good at art. And like, I never did again. Like I never took another art class after oh, that man. until college. And I'm just like, man, but yeah. Painful. What about you? Well, I'm, I'm sitting here hung up on the fact that Drew, if you didn't learn to jump rope, your entire life would be changed right now. So I'm still stuck I, there. I'd do that, right? I'd still be in kindergarten. Still be in that parking lot. You would, you would never met Lacey. You wouldn't have the kids you have. I'm into that time travel right? stuff, man. Like, oh, the timeline shifts and Drew's not here now. Right. Thank goodness for the jump rope skills. Conversation about babies. Because you know babies hit these milestones like rolling over or like, you know, <laughs> different things like crawling or whatever. And you, when you first have a kid, you're like, oh no, what if they never learn to roll over? Then you just start imagining like, like an, adult. <laughs> an adult that can't roll over. Yeah. Yeah. I, me and Kay both, um, we both had a pretty similar experience of public school. Now, I was in a much bigger public school. And if you caught me from kindergarten to fifth grade, I would be wearing a pair of bifocals, had an Argyle sweater vest. I was the teacher's pet, like <laughs> straight A's. And then in fifth grade, there was a, a paradigm shift in my life because I got out teacher's petted by, that's not bad. I got outwitted by another teacher's pet. How's that? Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she like bumped me into, she was now the teacher's pet and I was like nothing. And I had this like collapse of, oh no, who am I? I'm not the, the nerdy wow. teacher's pet anymore. This, cause my fifth grade teacher did not like me. She was very oh, obviously yeah. didn't like me. And then in sixth grade, I was like, you know what? I'm going to be the class clown. And so I started just like kind of, instead of being like the teacher's pet, I started like making jokes and, and fortunately, <laughs> and this is where, you know, I don't, uh, you know, we're obviously super pro homeschool, but 
I did have a couple, a very few public school teachers who I look back on and I do think, well, they were good. And this one, she got me. She was like, I was, I, I wanted to make a show. I, so I asked her, hey, can I run a show this week for the class? It's called the Aust Leno Show. And I'm gonna, it's gonna be a variety comedy show because I used to watch Jay Leno when I was like in sixth grade. And she was like, yeah, go for it, have fun. And we put on this show and the class loved it, so she let us do it another week. And it turned out the whole year, every Thursday, the Oslano show went for our, our group of, they called it a cluster. And here I am today with like a YouTube channel and a podcast. And I kind of look back like, thank you, Mrs. Payne, because it worked. <laughs> but she was, she was the only teacher who ever like did allow that creativity. And I'm sure it broke a bunch of rules. And I, I don't even know why she ever let me do it. Uh, but but that was a good experience. And actually, Kay had a pretty... Teacher. Yeah, yeah, she was great. She was really a just great. And there are those out there. And yeah, that's there one are. thing I always like to say when we're talking about homeschool is there are great oh, yeah. teachers. And that's... Ne- uh, yeah. We're very rarely ragging on the teachers as the... There are bad teachers and there are good teachers. Yeah. And I've had a few great ones in my life. So she was definitely a part of that. I'm still so thankful for the great teachers because they taught me how to learn, you know? Yeah. And, even though I didn't thrive in a school setting, in their classes I did thrive. Yeah, so yeah. It definitely. Yeah, you know, if I got to sit with them all day, <laughs> but <laughs> this is how it works. We so. we both had like a pretty good public school experience. We were both well liked by our class. Me and Kay were both actually voted in the superlatives in high school, uh, best personality by our our grade, which is kind of <laughs> funny because we weren't in the same school or anything. But we like both, so we were well liked by our grade. We neither of us had like a horror story from public school. And to be perfectly honest, I was totally against the idea of homeschooling when Kay first brought it up because I had grown up with, <clears throat> excuse me, I had grown up with some friends who for a couple different reasons were homeschooled. I knew right. some people who were, you know, that that idea that people have in their mind of like the, the not well socialized homeschool kid from the oh. 80s. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I, I knew one of those. And then I also had a buddy of mine who went homeschooled and and he wasn't the perfect example of what a homeschool experience could be. So I just had these like negative connotations that I think a lot of people have. And mm-hmm. when Kay was like, hey, you know, I kind of think I want to homeschool. I was like, no, we're going to have one of them weird kids. <laughs> right yeah. and i was totally for a long time i was against it yeah. I, I will say that the weird kids is what i love now, <laughs> yeah now we're going to yeah for sure like you you know we have like all of our friends pretty much all of them homeschool now and you know there'll be like this random kid that'll come up to you is like 10 did, year, did 10 you years 10 years old can live for five years yeah, or yeah like, we, we had a farm camp in um one of the kids that we were looking at manure patties and I was like, Oh, I think that's a dung beetle. And he's like, yes, that's a North American dung oh, beetle. Man, I love it. The yeah. African dung beetle, you know, and like yeah. gives all this stuff. And I'm like, man, this is amazing. Like, you know, yeah. you don't, <laughs> that uh, it's, I've gone from like being afraid of the nerdiness to like really just love it. <laughs> I think it's what makes, will make a, uh, amazing human well, beings. Well, maybe that's what freedom on. really looks like. Right. Yeah. D- different. <laughs> to be comfortable, right? right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lacey, you kind of yeah. touched on it a little bit in what you were saying, but public school is not designed to allow us to all chase our weird individual passions and interests. You're oh, yeah. supposed to discourage being a sculptor, <laughs> right? right? Like, we're yeah. so, no child left behind, but no child goes ahead, right? Everybody stays in kind of a, right. a pool <laughs> and stays the same as much as, and we all learn the same things and you don't get to really chase those passions. And when we look at yeah. the, the adults, you know, that we've all become and we're proud of, we are, <laughs> people watch my channel. I know they think I'm weird by the life I live. Uh, but that connotation, and I think there's, I know whenever we talk about homeschooling, there's usually when when I feel like when two parents are talking about this together, usually one of them is going to be less ready. And I know that was me. I was the one who had this negative idea that like, oh man, I'm going to have weird kids and they're not going to be socialized and they're going to, you know, it's going to affect them long-term in life. Um, 
And obviously, I don't feel that way anymore. But that, I was the the holdout. Did you guys were you both on board? Like, let's do this. I was trying to think. Was I resistant to it? I don't. I think. No, I don't think so. I think honestly, at that point when we made that decision, I was the one staying home. So it was like, yeah, you're the you're the one who makes those calls. And we did have friends who were homeschooling, so it wasn't that abnormal anymore. Oh, that's nice. You know, it was, we were in a network of people who were like, yeah, no, we're doing we're doing this. I think for me, the hesitation was. Well, there was like a couple. One was there, there was a Spanish immersion school in our area. And I thought, well, it would be really cool if our kid could speak Spanish fluently and felt yeah. confident in that. And I tutored a girl that had gone to that school and she was fa- fabulous with Spanish in a way that I was envious of because I have a Spanish degree and then still I'm not comfortable speaking Spanish. We um, needed that Spanish yesterday. We were selling we did, sheep. Right? And I was like, Lacey, just talk to the guy. I was like, man, you know, I know <laughs> Obeja, like <laughs> in, in more farm talk. Um, but yeah, so, um, you know, I think I thought she would gain this confidence that, you know, I wouldn't be able to give her, but at the same time, I think I also felt a degree of like, oh, if I choose this, I'm not just choosing it for her. I'm choosing it for me. And it, you know, like it's going to change the trajectory of what I can do because my kid's not going to be gone for eight hours a day, you know, like there's, yeah. And, you know, fortunately it wasn't really something that I wanted. If I'd had a career, I maybe it would have been more of like a non option, but, um, you know, as a stay at home mom and, and it was an easy, a relatively easy decision for us, fortunately. Although I will say that I was ra- harassed by both my mother. I remember one time my mom and my younger sister were in the car together and they just, it, Naomi was, our oldest was very young, like maybe only a year. And I said, you know, I think we're going to homeschool. That's what I'm leaning towards. And they were like, you can't do that to your kid. They're going to end up so weird. Blah, blah, blah. There it is. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. Yeah. Um, my, and the irony is that my mom homeschooled my brother for the last like four years of his uh, of his education. And then and my sister um, is now a homeschooling mom of four. So <laughs> she had an early childhood education degree. And she thought, well, you know, we know how to do it right at school. Yeah. And then, and then she also, she sent her kids to school for a few years and realized, like, this is dumb. We should be doing this at home. So now she's an avid homeschooler. <laughs> what was your guys, like, what, if you had to say, like, the, and maybe it's not just one, like, you just talked a lot there about why, Lacey, but was there, like, and maybe even now, do you have, like, a clear why you choose like a big reason that you come back because it's not always easy right and it makes our sure, life yeah. there are pros and cons to everything we're always really open about like yeah we love this but it doesn't mean it's perfect there's no perfect yeah. solution right so what's the why that keeps you guys doing it and, and uh, we didn't even have you tell on your side like you guys have a lot of kids and everything different ages what's the real big why is there a single one i think the i think the why changes it's a fluid why yeah but i I, I, would, I think there's an overall one I, I would say currently for me the why is that i kind of view like traditional school is almost like creating indoctrination indoctrination creating kids for the system mm-hmm. um or adults for the system and i really want our kids to be entrepreneurial minded and free thinkers not no not no limits like mm-hmm. we have a good friend that um is an adult now and has like a large farm in Virginia and he's a homeschooler. And we always joke, like he's successful because he never learned like he can't failure <laughs> that he can't. Yeah. He does things. And you're like, what, how is he doing that? <laughs> and he was like, I know. Cause he's homeschooled. Like he ne- nobody ever told him he couldn't. Uh, and, uh, a um, lot of freedom. Yeah. The other thing is cultural. I mean, I, and it's not like, it's not even just like, you know, what's happening kind of globally at this point, but really even at the time, like our religion is fairly important to us or the, the foundation for everything we do and the cultural, you know, experience that happens in schools is very, I mean, even though they're like, Oh, we're, you know, secular, like it's um, there's a lot of, um, of pushing different religious beliefs or, non-religious beliefs or whatever that I don't like anyone having to control over that situation other than us, you know? So yeah, yeah. Um, I think that has been huge too, to be able to kind of just give our kids a foundation before they go out into the world and have to defend their beliefs or their, um, their culture in any way. So yeah, that, that for sure has played a huge part yeah. in, in why we, why it's better suited for us. 
What about you, Austin? Yeah, I, I re relate to a lot of what you guys said. So I remember very specifically what really got me the, the incident, I would say, that got me really thinking about doing this, and now I know what, why we do it nowadays. Mm -hmm. We lived in Connecticut, and I will remember this day forever. Uh, my son was about two years old at the time, so not yet ready for public school. But we're starting to talk about it, right? He's two going on three, and we're starting to say like, oh, you know, what are we gonna do with him? Where's he gonna go? And Kay had already been talking about like, you know, she wanted homeschool, and I was like, eh. And I'm working in a town where, the town was Danbury, Connecticut. We're like right down the road from the hospital, and sirens just going crazy, going crazy. And so we turned on the radio, and it was Sandy Hook. Oh, which wow. was oh. yeah we were like two towns over from sandy hook and we just heard wow. all day the hospital the the um ambulances and i just, remember that day here yeah. too it also solidified i mean we were already homeschooling and but i remember when i was like oh thank goodness i don't have to worry about that like, yeah what a, what an added reason to not not ever send our children that's into one and, of and you know the, the you can't live your life in fear and um, yeah you know i don't want to like tell people who are listening who are thinking about this or whatever that the only reason you should is that mm -hmm. but but there's a spectrum of danger in the world right there's there's school shootings which these kind of horrific incidents are rare mm -hmm. they're yeah. awful but they are rare but then kids then you take that spectrum of things bad things that happen to kids on in government schools and it's not, and it, some of them is done by teachers and other adults, some by other kids, but there's a whole yeah. spectrum. But more than just that. And in fact, I'm more afraid, honestly, of the damage that testing does. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, we are oldest is, she's got some learning challenges. And I think if she was put in a situation where she had to, um, she had to be tested regularly, like they do in schools, yeah. she, she would have, she would have no confidence. How could she have confidence? Oh, yeah. That's how you measure somebody's success or not, right? Yeah. So, the fact that we've been able to avoid that being an imprint on her life. I mean, and I didn't know that when we started. I didn't know that she was, you know, challenged, had any, you know, difficulties there. But to think that the only way I would have found out is to watch her probably fail. struggle and yeah. fail again yes. and again. And again. Yeah. You know, and for her to not have that experience or at, le at least a very limited experience of that, I think she's the most confident young woman that I, I, probably know in her age group so yeah. and and i know it wouldn't be like that if if she had gone that route so, so and yeah, that's huge that uh, i like confidence when we talk later about like how we do it and like what confidence is a huge reason why we homeschool and mm. we'll get, i'll get back to i know for us that later but yeah i totally it's it's what got my attention was that imminent danger but then you realize what letting your children and you just said something Lacey that uh you said let we want to build a foundation in our kids before we send them out into the world right and I've heard people who are kind of like more of the opinion that no you got to get kids in public school where their views are challenged and they're they're faced with other opinions and things right and I always think like you know you look at animals Look at elephants. What happens when the lions attack the elephants? Do they send the young out and say, well, you got to learn sometime? No. <laughs> right? They, they circle the young and they protect them because now's not the time, right? When you're bigger and you got big tusks and you got a giant trunk and you can beat the lions, you'll be on the outside of the ring. But when you're little and you, you don't know how to defend yourself and you don't know how to process these feelings and you're still figuring yourself out, the family, <laughs> your brothers are going to pick on you. Your sisters are going to tease you. Your uncles yeah. and aunts and cousins are going to make fun of you. And right, you'll get enough of a challenge of ideas within the family, but it's, it's more inside of the elephants. And that's a big part. Yeah. We really believe, yeah, get your kids. This is the place to build them up into the bigger elephant. Then they can go with their tusks and their trunk and do what they want to do. Yeah. But.
I know I had a conversation with one of my friends when we both had the same age kids and I was going to homeschool and she was like, I don't think so. And I was like, well, you know, I just feel like school is a really dark place right these days. And, and I'm not sure that I want to send my kid there. And she's like, well, I want to send my kid in to be a light. And I was like, well, that's a lot Ooh, to ask of a yeah. six year old. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and in the end, guess what? They homeschool. So <laughs> I think they sent her in and they were like, yeah, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> um, because you know, and I wasn't like, oh, yeah, I'm right. I think it's just that intuition. And, yeah. you know, we have a lot in our culture saying, stop with that intuition. You're wrong. This is right. You're wrong. This is right. Like kind of is shoved down our throat a lot. Yeah. And it can be really hard to to let go of what you envisioned when you were a kid for your kids. You know, if you told me when I was a kid, my kids would be homeschooled. I'd be like, no, never. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, that's true. no, I would never do that to my children. You know, I, I think I remember those specific conversations, but. Anyway, so it's a process of shifting and letting go of yeah, some of that. I wanted to ask you guys before we get too far for my audience who might be new to you, uh, you know, let my audience know you guys have more than one kid. You have a really large span of ages. What's your family yeah. right now? What's it look like? We have a 17 year old that will, is almost 18. Yeah. And then uh, 13, 11, and six. Mm hmm. Yeah. Have to double check this age. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. But, uh, so the three oldest are girls, and then the youngest is a boy. So pray for him. He has four moms. <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's a uh, it's a really fun age range. I love it. I mean, like our seventeen year old. While we're doing this, she's taking him over to the pool to hang out at the pool for a little yeah. while. So it's it. There's something really cool about having the the older child. But, yeah. But how old are yours? What's your my, our We're a little bit in age behind you guys. Our, our oldest is 12. He just turned 12. And he, a testament to homeschool and uh, the things you learn, he's running this show right now in the sound booth. That's so. awesome. Oh, that's right. You said your son was doing it. I didn't even piece that together. That's yeah. Crazy. So you guys right job. now, you you don't see what he's doing. But you've you know if you've seen the podcast video version before, he's in a professional sound studio. He's got a sound mixer he runs. He's got a switchboard he's running, multiple monitors. Um, and what the finished product that people see on YouTube with the camera changes and, and the audio quality and everything, he's doing that all by himself at 12 years old. So that is so impressive, right? A little testament to the quality of, you know, what, yeah. what our kids are capable of. And now my next oldest is 10 year old daughter. She used to be in the sound booth here with him running the audio, but now I found she's really got a knack for camera work. So lately our vlogs, if you see... We're walking around the homestead, talk, walking talks. It's her filming. So she's behind the camera now. That's and so good. Uh, yeah. Awesome. So then, and then it goes all the way down to we have a seven month old. So 12 to seven months old and six kids, three boys, three girls. Uh, so a little bit of everything on this end. Nice. Oh, you got the good so balance, too. Yeah, no, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, we have to stop because it's perfectly balanced. Now the kids yeah. all want a tiebreaker. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah. yeah. We brought balance to the that. force, so. <laughs> what a cool thing, though. I mean, how amazing to, like, not only, I mean, you created this family business that you, what a, I mean, that's just like, you couldn't get that in school, right? Yeah. You couldn't, uh, probably by the time he left high school, he would, still wouldn't have that experience. And now, I mean, he can take that and run and. And wow, that there's always going to be a need for that. I think from here into the future. So yeah. you know yeah. that that right there, the, the need, Lacey, a big part of why, like I told you guys, why what changed my mind, but now mm -hmm. why we homeschool, and I think it's like so similar to what you guys said. Um, you know, uh, you look at the world we live in today, right? And if you do your research, we're not going to do it on the show. I've done the research. I'm sure I've heard you guys talk about it on your show before. Um, but someone listening, do the research, the public school that here in the United States, the design, how it's run, it's been that way for, you know, going on 200 years here. It was designed, it's a Prussian based education system that was designed to make obedient soldiers and factory workers to support military effort. And I mean, you look at the, the education in government run schools, the, the second I... The first thing that got me thinking, no, we definitely have to hold in school was Sandy Hook, right? That was the first thing. The second thing was uh, my son, when he was very young, had some speech issues. And so mm -hmm. the state provided a, a speech therapist that you could go to. And 
they were located in public school. So you would go to the public school and you'd go into the classroom and there's the speech therapist. And uh, so he would have a half hour with her each week to work on speech therapy. And as a parent, we would just sit in the hallway for half hour to an hour and watch elementary school kids. And I remember just sitting and watching how much time was spent. These kids, this is like their education for life, right? How much time was spent just teaching kids to stand in a line and be quiet. Yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah. every day. Like this wasn't like I was there on the first day of school and okay, everybody, this is how we act in the hallway. It was every time I was there, the teacher was for 10 minutes outside of the cafeteria berating all the high energy kids. Hey, you knock it off or you're not getting in recess. <laughs> right. Because yeah. the high energy kid should have recess taken away. That's going to help. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. And I think um during the pandemic too, we saw that like all of a sudden all these kids are at home and like we talked to friends that were like our kids are getting done with school in like three hours. Yes. <laughs> and it's like, it's like, what? Yeah. What else are they doing? Yeah. Right. And, and we all well, went to public yeah, school. We relying. remember. Yeah. Yeah. You're relying on what the kids in your like class behavior is, you know, like how much learning you can actually do or what. So you true. Know, yeah. I mean, a lot of times the punishments that happen for one kid happen for everybody because, you know, you miss game time because a couple of were rowdy you know yeah. i remember yep. that happening a lot of times <laughs> yeah um so yeah oof oof <laughs> <laughs> so how how have you guys this is you know unique to us we're both homeschoolers but we also are really serious homesteaders you guys mm. were talking about homeschool today but we could have you back on the show in a couple months to talk about cows or sheep or all better. kinds of other stuff uh yeah. you guys have a serious homestead how do you homeschool your kids and have a homestead and how does it all work together? I, this actually the last thing that we were talking about made me think about how really early on in our our relationship and our family building, I think we started to question the like system of dad leaves for work, kids leave for school, mom stays and, you know, house keeps, right? Or, or mom goes to work too. Either way, everybody kind of meets for dinner and then leaves in the morning, meets for dinner and leaves in the morning. You know, like that, that is such a, um, like industrial, I don't know, American, modern, I don't even know, like when did that become normal? Right. Yeah, it's kind of industrial revolution. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. And so we just started thinking like, that's not a holism. Like that's not our holistic family like context that's not how we want to want to be it doesn't make sense it's not what would be true in like the bible times it's not what would be true up like even maybe a couple hundred years ago that wouldn't have been what would be normal um and you know families had family run businesses you know family run cobblers family run watchmakers you know everybody like it was a family thing that you all worked on and had your part in maintaining the house and keeping everything and you learn as you go like that was just more of what and even going to school you know when it started going to school was like a couple hours a week it wasn't what we do now where it's like how many 40 hours a week that these kids are shuffled off and and so when we started questioning that I think we started really overhauling our thought pattern on like okay well so if we're going to create this holistic family unit what does that even mean and what do we do at home um and what does home mean and and what how do we interact with with this home that we have and create something that's holistic and meaningful. And obviously, you know, it starts one little beehive at a time. You start a garden and you're like all of a sudden um, planting trees and berry bushes. And like, it just becomes sort of second nature to want to do more and touch more on your property and it, and, and it be more of a living organism. So I think that's really how we stepped into this life naturally is just seeing that is, uh, the family home is a part of the the whole the whole picture. Yeah, that made me think of like two questions, right? People who are listening, who are thinking, and I mean, with COVID, a lot of people got at least a trial run of this. Oh yeah, but, I mean, I think it was the, it was the incubator for yeah, a lot of people. Yeah. Like, oh, this is great. But we <laughs> like, do have too. like you know, world's changing, and there are new parents, right? Every every year, we're gonna have yeah. new parents up and coming, maybe listening to these episodes. How do you, on mm-hmm. the one hand, fit it into your life 
you guys talk about creating that holistic family and that I know is part of your, your, even your brand there is the holistic family. Mm-hmm. You got to make money, you got to pay the bills mm-hmm. and your kids need an education. What is your, how have you guys built your lifestyle to support all this? Yeah, Drew just quit his job and we just, you know, no, I'm just joking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, over the years, we've Ste- stepped in that. Yeah, direction. we've stepped in that. I, I, we always challenge our audience with this is like, it's never an overnight thing. Yeah. You know, like take it generally. Yeah. yeah, generally, it's not an overnight thing. Take steps, you know, take and we did. We kind of worked our way into it. I ran, I had my own business. Um, and Lacey started her own business and then her business started making more money than mine did. So I sold mine and, um, we stayed, I was, I'm able to stay home now based off of that. Mm -hmm. And then we have, you know, it's similar to you guys. We have lots of entrepreneurial streams of income that are all home based, are Mm -hmm. all home based. And like the kids can participate in, um, a lot of them are the homestead. Like today on Wednesdays, we have like a, farmer's market that i'm pretty sure we're bleeding money on that so don't do that <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's like, like a passion you know like the local yeah. food is a passion so it's we call it networking our passion project. Yeah, yeah yeah there's, uh, there's other but, kinds uh, of capital or yeah there's other, other ways to pay exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. and we we say that sometimes like maybe we're losing money on that but we've made like 30 or 40 new friends, you know, yeah. so community. Yeah, yeah. The, the community connection Priceless. is there. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. Um, I would say on the day to day, like one thing that we've done is we've designed everything on the homestead so that like from the six year old on up, they can do it. Like yeah, six year old is kind of yeah, like, six year old. <laughs> I mean, most six year olds could, he's a little bit on the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's the baby. The babies are always right. Yeah. 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 Let's say the six year old should be able it to, it might be it. easier just to do it instead of have the six year old do it. So that's what happens. <laughs> but we've designed the systems nonetheless yeah, so true. that kids can do it. Like, I mean, I was out of town and Lacey was gone and the kids like moved the cows for us, you know, yeah. like, they we want like part of homeschooling like we talked about is that confidence level like we want you like there's nothing um uh, more intimidating i mean you know like when you're first moving cows and working with cows like mm-hmm. that's that can be pretty intimidating even mm-hmm. as a grown man but oh, yeah. like you know a kid that's like shorter than the cow like i i don't know that but they do it and, and i'll say we great we fail here a lot too i mean there's a lot of times where i can see the kids building resentment about their chores or about you know the way that we're doing things yeah. and we have to check back in and be like okay look this is a family affair right we're doing this not to earn money as much as we are doing it so that we can be together and so that we can learn together and that you know we can develop these skills that are you know kind of invaluable together and what is it, you know, like share your passion, shares your, your interests. How can we incorporate what you love into what we're doing? And I think you're a really beautiful uh, vision of that with your kids involved in the filming and the sound of what you're doing. I mean, that's, I never even would have thought like, oh, let's get one of my kids. To, yeah. I mean, it just <laughs> isn't something I would have thought to do, but what a beautiful thing that they'll have the memories of working with you on that and the memory, also the skill. I mean, that's huge. So I think we constantly have to keep learning and, and it makes me really curious. What are the ways that you guys do that too? Cause your, your crew is a little bit younger. So yeah. for us, it's easy to pass off for the most part, you know, they're 11 and up is a lot of competence levels, but what about you guys? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, um, that's a good question. Cause there, you have the different span and ages. And as, as you were saying that I was looking over to see if I could make eye contact with my son in the sound room to see if he actually, uh, does he enjoy working with dad right now or not? <laughs> He's nodding yes, so good. Um, so I think that that's a super important thing, though. It's like it's not all sunshine and bubbles. Every yeah. job like, you're going to deal with a yeah. boss that you may or may not oh, know. Yeah. Like, being honest with the audience of like most of the time it's good with the kids, but most. you know, like it's still a parent kid relationship. You know, <laughs> such a good okay, so that's such a good topic. I even wrote this down. Like the idea of failure, right? And and that's a, that's another reason we actually really like homeschooling. We're gonna come back to talking about failure, why it's a bad thing in public school, why we feel homeschooling and failure are actually good things. Uh, but first, we're gonna take a quick break from this episode to teach you about poison ivy. <laughs> 
Whoa, why are we talking about poison ivy, Aust? It's the fall. We don't have to worry about poison ivy anymore, right? Wrong. There's actually a spike in poison ivy cases this time of year, and it's because people who go fruit picking, maybe you are going apple picking, maybe you're going peach picking, uh, early to mid and even late fall, a lot of people go out and do picking with the family at the local orchard. This time of year, poison ivy can be found growing around the bases of apple trees, and a lot of families will come home with more from their favorite orchard than just some beautiful Instagram photos and an apple pie. Don't worry, we got a great tip for you if you're looking to avoid poison ivy, a new sponsor of the Home Study Show. You may remember them from an episode we did just a couple months ago all about goat milk soap. Jocelyn and Tim from Laurel Mountain Soap started making soap for their daughter who had very sensitive skin as a baby. Over the years, they've grown their business to provide beautiful soaps, lotions, lip balms, and an amazing product that could help your family this time of year, Jewelweed Soap. Soap that has jewelweed in it helps to remove the poison ivy oil, Urushal oil, off of your skin. It also helps to alleviate itching. It can help to dry up your rash and it can help your skin heal from a rash that's developed after you've had a case of poison ivy. Their jewelweed soap is not just for poison ivy, poison oak, poison sumac, stinging nettles, bug bites, bug stings, you name it. If it hurts, if it itches and it's on your skin, this soap can probably help. It has long lasting results. It's moisturizing. And when used in combination with Laurel Mountain's jewelweed salve, you find this one-two punch will not only get rid of the rash, but it will help your skin heal. And the best part, the reason we actually became customers of Laurel Mountain Soap, it's all natural and non-toxic. Tim and Jocelyn built this company trying to make the best quality soap for their baby who had really sensitive skin. And it's the soap that we trust on our baby, our kids, ourselves. We wouldn't tell you about it if we didn't believe in it. You can actually learn a lot more about them. We did an episode with them. We'll have a link in the description of this podcast where you can check out the episode with Tim and Jocelyn. Or you can Google Laurel Mountain Soaps. Head to laurelmountainsoaps.com to purchase. And don't forget to use the coupon code that we have for you. Use the coupon code, all caps, JEWEL10, J-E-W-E-L-10, for 10% off your entire order. Don't forget to use that code, JEWEL10. That'll make sure that you get your discount and to let them know that you came from Homesteady. Failure. Fail. What does that bring up to mind, the idea of failing? I remember being in school, always being terrified of getting an F on my report card. We become afraid of failure, but that's not really setting us up for a realistic expectation in life, right? Failure happens, and it's one of the reasons we so like homeschooling. You know, <laughs> such a good, okay, so that's such a good topic. I even wrote this down, like the idea of failure, right? In public school, one of the worst things you can do is fail, right? Oh, the worst. Yeah. The like, worst, yeah, other than absolutely. being kicked out of, right? What's the, what do they call when they well, kick you yeah, out? Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> expelled. Expelled, yeah. right? Other than being expelled, like getting an F on your report card, which stands for fail. Oh, fail. no. Yeah. Well, how am I going to show my mom I failed? But yeah. <laughs> watch my YouTube channel from the last eight years. There's been a lot of failures. We've right. openly shared them on the channel. They're mm. honestly some of our most lucrative videos. So there's a lesson right there that like failure is yeah. not always bad, right? It can, you can use it for good. <laughs> yeah. um, but just that idea. And then that idea that you guys are saying is like, it's, it's people think sometimes I think when you present homeschool versus public school and it gets very much that like homeschool versus public school. Mm. Um, well, you, you know, here's the problem with homeschool and here's the problem with homeschool and here's the problem with homeschool. Well, yeah, we didn't say homeschool is perfect. We yeah. certainly didn't say the government run school is perfect. Uh -uh. Everything has give and take. And, uh, you know, we're, we are going to make mistakes in how we teach our kids and how we incorporate our, our work life balance, all these things. But how much easier is it to correct a mistake for your own kids? And, and you guys know you have multiples. Each one's different. Right. So mm. a good example just recently with us was uh, uh, use of tablets. 
right? And this is very much a personal family decision. I'm not here to preach on how people should use screen time and tablets and especially with homeschool and education. But I know my kids, I know each individual one at different ages, um, you know, some of the boys versus some of the girls, differences I've noticed. I, I see how they're affected by screen time and I see how they're affected differently. And one one of the grandparents had offered to get them for homeschool some tablets. And for years, we'd said no. And finally, we said, all right, you know what? Uh, they are ready to do some things like video editing and, and making movies and doing photography. And they could use it as a tool. But a mistake we made was for most of the older kids, here's the rules. Here's the, the time limits. Here's what you can do. Blanket. Kind of like public school, right? Blanket. You're in third grade. These are the rules. Oh, Instead of yep. adapting. And fortunately, because we're homeschooling, Kay and I were able to look after just a couple months and say, mm, you know what, this isn't working. They're not blanket slate kids. They're all very different and treating them all similar in, in this tool is wrong, right? Yeah. You, just like any tool on the homestead, I, I'll let my son use an impact driver, my oldest son use an impact driver. I'm not gonna let my six-year-old use the impact driver without maybe me helping him and showing him how. I'm definitely not going to let the baby near the impact driver, right? So like like all things, but we can quickly change that. Whereas if there's a problem in the government school, good luck trying to get that changed because you're, you're one kid out of the whole hundred and hundreds of kids in the grade has an issue with how they're doing things. It's yeah. so true too, especially, I mean, it's kind of like talking about a diet. When you're talking about, when you're talking about um, electronics, it's like food, right? Because you're consuming it. And I think that, you know, some kids can't have peanuts. Some kids shouldn't have sugar or red dye number 40 or, you know, like there's all these different eating, digestion, digestion, like just food-based related sensitivities that we're aware of. And electronics is not one. And it is, it should be, because I think exactly the same with our children. We have one in particular who I've been like, no, no we're scaling way back. We gave her some freedoms that her sister got at her age, but I see how it affects her and it's not it's not good. Her, her body does not respond the same way that her <laughs> body responds to that consumption. It, yeah. And so we have to regulate that differently and also teach her how to self-regulate. Because yes. I think, you know, what we get at school is this opportunity to tell kids what to do all the time. And then they leave and they don't know what to do with themselves because they don't know how to tell themselves what to do. And my goal as a parent is to give my, my children the skill of being able to say, this is what I'm going to do, and then go do it without waiting for somebody to give them instructions. And I work with people a lot in an entrepreneurial way. And most people really struggle with the, the, the in, when it comes to entrepreneurialism, being their boss and actually coming up, they can come up with a plan, but they cannot force themselves to, to like put in the man hours because no one's like over them clocking them in, you know, it's a really difficult skill to develop. And that's what I want my kids to be able to do. I don't care what they do as long as they can, you know, they might not know the capital of Africa. Uh, but you know like yeah yeah. <laughs> but uh, if, if they know how to like teach themselves yeah yeah i mean there's no important. like lit that's yeah. the other thing it's like you know we have a six-year-old almost seven-year-old boy who cannot really read at all and you know his peers a lot of them can read very fluently actually um and a lot of times parents will be like oh he's reading at a fourth grade reading level and you're, and it makes me a little bit sick because what you don't understand is that children the day they're ready to learn will pick up a book and almost read it front to back oh man um, so true and it, us forcing them is just a building a, a relationship with them between them and learning that's forced and painful and you know, and it's been, it's taken a lot of unschooling and de-schooling for yeah. me to get to the point where I'm comfortable saying my six and a half year old cannot read. And if he can't read until he's eight and a half that day, he can read. I know it'll be, it'll be a beautiful, beautiful thing. When you look at, we talked about this a bit already, but the idea of not being public school failure is the worst thing. And then there's First. these grading systems and these, in, there's, you're in a specific grade and then you get specific grades and how you're doing and there's your kids, your child is ahead. Your child is behind. And there's this idea that like every child needs to be the same level at the same time. And when you, and you guys know, cause you have multiples, right? When you have a lot of kids, this was not as easy to see, but although with two kids, I could see it already. 
We have six kids. I see it clear as day now. Some of them excel in things at a younger age that the others don't. Whether it's physical, my oldest son was walking at six, seven months old. My oldest daughter, it was awful. (laughs) You should not be moving around like that. None of us were ready for that. Uh, But my oldest daughter, I think she was, it was after a year, right? Now that's just physical. Now look, let's look at uh, learning to read speech, right? Development. Um, mm-hmm. my, my oldest son versus when my oldest daughter versus my next two when they learned to read. And you said, Lacey, this was so true. Uh, we were in the beginning, the early days, and this is something I think as a homeschool you, parent, you will have to learn. You cannot get, if you're going to leave public school, here's what public school is good at. They're really good at mm-hmm. drills. Right? Yeah. They're right. really good at making your kids write the letter A 40 times for the next two weeks and then yeah. writing the letter B 40 times. And with that kind of drill, most kids will eventually get it banged through their head how to draw a cursive A and how to pronounce the word cat. If yeah. you don't approach your homeschool like that, and I, I know from what I've heard from you guys, and I know we're not, we don't approach in a drill like you're going to learn how to read cat before the week is over. <laughs> your kid will be quote unquote, and I hate this term, but you just have to get ready for it behind, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to hear, oh, wow, your, your son's, uh, he's behind in reading. Mm-hmm. People that I remember having family members come to me and be like, we're concerned because your kids are behind in their reading. The older kids, they're behind than, than their counterparts. And I had to be able to tell, and this is where you have to leave the public school idea that failure and that mm-hmm. this being behind thing is bad and, oh man, you're going to get a B or a C or a D. You have mm-hmm. to have the confidence to say, we know what we're concerned. And with our homeschool, we don't have follow a specific curriculum, maybe for a thing, but we don't follow mm-hmm. a specific right. curriculum. We don't follow a specific, we don't cover this category today and this category today and this category today. We're really concerned about the three things are, we want our kids' homeschool education to produce is a, a creative, mm. competent child who's capable of critical thinking. So I call them the three Cs. I love it. <laughs> the world we live in, the challenges that they're going to face, the fate that we're facing – trying to survive financially as breadwinners. You guys have been through this, through a pandemic, all these crazy regulations, all this weird stuff happening, raising children at the same time. Who didn't have to get really creative in our lives in the last two years? Yeah. yeah. With with that creativity and that change, you have to have the confidence in following through, but then you also have to have the critical thinking ability to look at your own ideas and find the faults. Right, because not every idea you you come up with is perfect. So with our with our education with our kids, it's really focused on that. We want to build those traits, and that will mean they're not going to read as fast as other kids their age. Maybe now, maybe some of them will read sooner. Right. Maybe mathematically they'll be behind. Right. Uh, we, but you just have to understand you can't have it all. Homeschool pros and cons. Right. So you have to yeah. accept. Find your why and then what you want to do. And that's why today, like with our talk, I was thinking I want to talk about the why and then the how, right? How do we do it? Because wow. other people, you don't get a gold star, right? You guys aren't going to get a gold star when your kids graduate homeschool. No right. one's going to give you an A in homeschool parenting. <laughs> right. That's what it's all about. I wrote a book and the the crux of the books is that it was to help entrepreneurs and the the crux of the book is my simple form C4 formula, which is creativity, confidence, capability, and commitment. Ooh, so, that's good too. I like those. <laughs> you just listed three of them. So I'm like, yep, no, we're on the same page here. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Giving kids this ability to do something that's and have those characteristics. It doesn't matter. I think we think of like this ahead and behind is a very linear way of thinking. And that's just not how growth works, right? Drew and I have talked about this a lot that Growth doesn't happen necessarily from one dot to the next, right? It happens yeah. in between and um, and around and all of those things. And I think about how many things I learned in school and begr- begrudgingly, you know, kind of did it to get it done. 
And then as an adult, I learned again or learned for the first time, honestly, you really, I like, because I was excited about it and interested in it. And so I think we have these deadlines and it's like, oh, well, if they don't learn, you know, now they'll never learn, but it's, it couldn't be further from the truth. We'll, we'll never get to the point where we can't learn that thing, you know, or like, you know, I, honestly, we have, an, what is it, 17, 14 and 11 year old, and none of them are very strong in their times tables. <laughs> well, they're good. <laughs> well, like, yeah. It's, so. it's pretty, it's pretty fun. Lacey did this challenge, like, was it a week ago or two couple, weeks ago? It's been like a couple weeks. To, yeah. Like when they get older, you know, they start getting motivated by money a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. So she was like, yeah, it's, it's been my favorite project so far. It's a, a stroke of genius. Um, thank you, thank she uh, <laughs> she challenged all of them to learn their times tables to twelve, but the deal was memorize like memorize, fast. Yeah. They all had to memorize them, and they it, when they all have them memorized, then they each get fifty dollars. They have until August fifteenth, and they have until August fifteenth. <laughs> so they have like this deadline, and it's like it feels a little bit sometimes <laughs> like one of those old like in the jail cell movies like i'm afraid someone's gonna get hit with like a, a <laughs> with like soap in a sock or something cause they're, like, they're like what do you mean you don't know your five times tables you better hurry the clock the clock is ticking so, well mean, they're like well you know we decided it wasn't worth 50 dollars so yeah. she's out but they can't get it unless all three of them do oh. it so they're all like it, it's peer pressure and like financial <laughs> and, i told yeah, her the other day i was like uh a ten dollar bonus if you get your six year old brother to memorize all of them. Oh, and they're, man. Like, forget, they're like, forget it, we're not doing it. Oh, Never. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think that what I noticed is that in that I realized what I realized I saw the need and I saw the um the strengths that they have. And my oldest is is not great with math. She's just never been great with math. And she agrees. <laughs> yeah. But um the other two are fine with math. And the, the oldest really is, she's very, um, she's very, she's a relator and she wants everyone to get along. I mean, she definitely fights with them, but you know, like I know what her strengths are and her strengths are teamwork. Right. And so when she, and also she's motivated by cash. So, yeah. you know, it was like looking at that and being able to modify what we're doing for that specific need. And also knowing that, look, she can learn her times table. I don't think I actually fully memorized my times tables until I was an adult. Yeah. True. It's still working. I did <laughs> for when I needed to, but yeah, I made room for other things. I can tell you all about the soil now. And there you go, right? You learn maybe what... not my times tables. <laughs> One of the biggest things that kind of homeschool and homeschooling children really made me and Kay realize is you cannot force any human being to learn anything. Right. You no. can you can force kids in a classroom through intimidation, through yeah. through um, praise, through winning a gold star, peer whatever pressure. tool, peer pressure, right? Or at home, you can do it too. Uh, to memorize a thing, you can get them, motivate them to remember it for the test. But you guys just said it, right? How many things did we learn, then forget, and then as an adult with the right motivation, I forgot how to use Excel, but then I had a business and wanted to figure out if it was going to be right? financially viable. <laughs> and man, the yeah. amount of time I've spent watching YouTube videos on how to create formulas in Excel, and I actually mm -hmm. learned them because I do this a lot now. So you can't force learning. And that's where I wanted to ask you guys, you know, when it comes to, cause people will hear this and people who aren't so sure about it are gonna say, okay, this sounds nice and it's cool. You guys get to have such a fun life with your kids. But at the yeah. end of the day, they have to learn to read. And there's your seven year old and you gotta teach them to read. What yeah. do you do? How do you work the actual, like, let's try to teach this thing how do you structure, yeah. what kind of structure is there in your guys' educational, you know, in your huh. teaching process? I, uh, so I say this a lot, actually, because people will be like, oh, tell me, you know, what's your wisdom? I'm like, don't worry, they'll figure it out. Like, because the truth is you can't raise an illiterate child in a literate home. It's physically impossible. I, I mean, I, it just, it just wouldn't be possible because, you know, you automatically start teaching somebody when they want to know. And every child wants to know how to read a book. 
they will maybe not immediately, like maybe not when they're six, maybe not when they're seven, but by the time they're eight or nine and they see their friends reading or they are driving down the street and their signs, you know, like we live in a world where reading is just such an integral part. Like it just will not be avoided. Um, it's like asking, how do you teach your child to speak? Like, I don't know. You just talk yes. to them, right? Like yes. you read to them, you read, you, you read, they want to read, right? Like there's, it's kind of one of those things where, yeah, you can go through the alphabet and help them learn the sounds and all of that. But the truth is like you, if you read to them within whenever that time frame is that they're ready to read, they will just, they will just read along with you. I mean, they really will. Well, I there's think- an interesting like, study with Rudolf Steiner where he mm-hmm. like talks about the development of children and mm-hmm. how when children lose like certain teeth there's like developmental like like things that correspond with their teeth losing mm-hmm. um and there's one brain development brain development mm-hmm. yeah and one of them is their it's their bottom teeth right where, I don't remember it's been a while there's like two it. teeth that when they lose them I, I believe it's I actually yeah. it's interesting because my son yesterday remember. He's it sick. might be those ones. So well, it's the two, top two. Yeah, it's the two next to the top two. When they lose those, then like they're kind of ready to start learning how to read. Mm-hmm. And it's like different for every kid. You know, I mean, every kid loses teeth at different times. But um, I have noticed that his interest in reading has like drastically spiked. And, like, in a week. If we're <laughs> like looking at a show or driving by a sign, he's like, what's that sign say? What are the mm-hmm. letters on that sign? Or What's that like? We, we as a family are guilty pleasures. We watch Alone, the show. <laughs> oh yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's like, what's that say? You know, and yeah. So it's like, um, there's like this. Uh, yeah. He's starting to realize, even notice that he doesn't have a skill that he wants to have. Yeah. So once that happens, is when learning takes place. Yeah. So, you know. just like you said with Excel, like <laughs> yeah. now he wants to know how to read. So it's yeah. like game on. Let's do it. Yeah. I think when you you said Lacey, like how do they learn to talk at home? And you mentioned before you took Spanish. You did you say you have like a degree in? That's See. her main degree. Yeah. And and you're <laughs> right. Okay, so you have a degree in in Spanish, the language, right? Yeah. How hard is it? I have tried to learn um, Pennsylvania Dutch. Uh, Ooh, <laughs> oh, that's, that's cool. cool. Yeah, it's a toughie. Um, K is K is fluent in Portuguese. Wow. Uh, so like totally can talk. With, and it's, um, she learned from Brazilian speakers. So it's with a Brazilian, I don't know if it's an <laughs> accent or they say a lot of words different. So it's like Brazilian Portuguese. But um, so we, we know like how hard is a language to learn, right? It's so hard. And mm-hmm. yet we watch our little ones at different ages and in different ability Right. suddenly their brains are just unlocking. Uh, we have right now a seven-month-old. And you you guys, I don't know if you relate to this. Like, I'm getting older. Each kid, I'm an older, wiser dad. I'm not the wisest or oldest yet. But I hope I get a little better with each one. And you also learn to like, oh, man, it goes so fast. I got a 12-year-old here, right? Like, with yeah. each one. And now I've built this lifestyle, me and Kate together, where we can enjoy it more, right? We're both home, like you guys talked about. We're both home. Our businesses are home-based. I never leave. It's so wonderful. My my oldest right. son, I was not home, but for a couple hours while he was awake in the early years. Now he gets to work alongside me every day. I get to yell at him all day, all morning. I'm like, hey, grab that, <laughs> do that. Go on, run, run, hustle. But, uh, you know, now I have this little baby that I'm getting to with him, I didn't get to see so much because I was gone. Mm. My my seven month old, I've been there every morning when she wakes up, and for an hour I get to just sit there while I have my coffee and see her. And then I've been able to give her naps, and I've been able to be and seeing how like one day suddenly she's going right, like which is such a big deal because some of my older kids were working on speech, and we're working on how do you teach these specific sounds. So like watching their brains unlock this huge complex thing, language, their our brains are supercomputers designed to, through curiosity, discover the world around us. And then I do believe that, you know, we all lean different ways, right? There are people who are just, I feel at their core, they are quality components for being an engineer. Yeah. I'm yeah. not one of them. <laughs> Well, no, that's like my six-year-old, you talked about how different kids can be. And 
I can watch him work and I'm like, oh my goodness. I mean, the other girls just never had, were so adept. Like Legos, you know, they always had Legos, but he can sit there for hours and make these things. He was making something today and I was like, where are the directions for that? He's like, oh, I just made it up. I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe that he just made this up. It was really interesting to watch um, how I, different that can be. And I will say like, is like back to kind of like the nitty gritty of like how we homeschool. The other thing is like, Lacey has like strategically placed um, <laughs> reference guides like to animals and different things all over the house. Mm -hmm. So like our back house, back part of our house has all windows and it like faces over our pond. So we have like books on like reptiles and birds and trees and like a set of binoculars. So like, you know, if you're sitting there looking out the window, you're like, what is that? Mm. You can pull out the binoculars and look and pull up the reference books. And, you know, it's like. My kids resent me a little bit about it because they're like, <laughs> I just want to Google it. And yeah. I'm like, no, yeah. I the book. <laughs> and, you know, there's only so much like they want to talk about birds and grass and all that stuff. But generally, like you'll find them like sneaking it or like you know, <laughs> you know there's a book that they can find on pretty much any topic mm -hmm. so now yeah. what about the curveball here and i i'll throw this at you like you know someone who's thinking about this and like oh, i don't know okay so all right we figure out language maybe they'll they'll cross a couple of your books and figure out how to read what about algebra how's your kid ever going to learn algebra with this you know crazy uh, homeschool homestead lifestyle yeah I, I will say we hit a little bit of a challenge there. I mean, we, like I said, my oldest is not mathematically inclined in any way. In fact, she hasn't been officially diagnosed, but there, we have been told that she probably has dyscalculia, which is similar just to dyslexia, only it really revolves more around numbers and, and also uh, short, like, um, I forget the word for it, but like retaining information she just heard. And this is true, like across the board. I could say, Naomi, go to the store and get me, blah, blah, blah. And she would get to the store and be like, was I supposed to come to the Food Lion or <laughs> the Dollar General? Like, she just is not. She, We're not sure how much is her personality and how yeah. much is not. Well, I mean, how much, you can't really separate those things, yeah. right? So um, she definitely struggles in that way. And she finally took a, a, like a college level algebra course. And actually it was algebra, geometry, chemistry, or not chemistry. Um, I can't remember, but like a four part college class and I thought you know we can probably eke our way through this and we could not and mm -hmm. honestly it was because I don't remember any of that either so yeah. it was just a lot and I think that you know what my mentality has always been is I'm not going to push my kids strengths just to get them to get through through the system you know it doesn't bother me that she can't do algebra because there's yeah. plenty in his life I mean like I said I forgot it because I don't use it right? yep. like I don't yeah. need to know yeah. algebra so who came up with the, oh, we all need to know algebra. We're not all going to be Da Vinci, you know, like mm -hmm. we're just not. And so <laughs> if we allow her to have a space to strengthen the things that she is strong in already, we can build a superpower instead of a kind of mediocrity that I think is what what's, the system is going for in everyone, you know? I don't think we're used to having folks be nurtured in their skills. We're, ha we're used to nurturing the weaknesses. And that's just not what I've wanted to do. So, you know, if your kid is on the trajectory to go, and the only reason that she even took a college class is because we have a great college, like free program for high schoolers and she can take photography classes and that's what she's interested in. Um, and so therefore, you know, that just is like, they, they grew the, I hate how they group degrees together. Like why as a Spanish major, did I have to take math? You know, right. like mm -hmm. it doesn't really make any sense at all, except for they want to keep you for those two years for those electives. Cause they can also charge you for those two years of electives that you just have to take for whatever reason. So I will say though, like, we're not big college people, as you can probably tell, like, <laughs> unless, unless there is if like, you know what you if want, there's a goal, yeah, yeah. There, there can be, a, but like, she's taking this free call. Like there, I guess I would like to offer some hope too, is yeah. like, even with our crazy kind of wonky homeschool style, she it was able to be successful in all of her other, um, Oh yeah. College classes. She did really, that she took. She's done really so, well. Yeah. You know, 17 years old and already has two, and I think, two semesters of college done. Yeah. Algebra so. is like her, her, like in our experience, the major challenge, but yeah. for other homeschoolers we've known have, who've done, approached very similarly. Um, they, their kids went to college, scored high on SATs, like all of those yeah. things. So that's the trajectory for your child. For us, that's not for our 17-year-old. And yeah, she yeah. 
So it just depends on the kid. The world has changed so much in the last 20 yeah. years as far as homeschool kids in college. If you want your kid to go to college, if your kid wants to go to college, homeschool is not a barrier to that. And that's something oh, that- right. In yeah. fact, it's an advantage in a lot of situations because yeah. colleges really enjoy these kids who have this like deep and like diverse education and experience. Yeah. And, and yeah. Shining. So like an extra bonus. So yeah. And you guys said it. I mean, uh, we, we feel very much the same way. Our kids- you know, when it comes to that question, right? Like, how are they going to learn algebra? How are you? Well, okay, you know, they learn to read when they're young and speak, but like, how are they ever going to learn algebra? And how are they going to learn advanced mathematics? And the first thing I could ask the person asking questions, how's your algebra? How's <laughs> right? your advanced mathematics? And if they're good at that, right? Oh, I actually am an engineer. My algebra is great. Great. Yeah. How, how, do, how well do you do as a writer? Right. What's your podcast like? Because mm -hmm. I make a living from mine. People like hearing oh, me tell God. stories. Right. I'm off on algebra. I, I failed. <laughs> the one class I was in real risk through public school of actually failing was algebra. And so yeah. when people say something to me like, well, how are you going to teach your kids algebra? I'm not. And out of my six, to be honest, maybe one will be good at algebra. Maybe two will be good at algebra. Me and Kay are lousy at algebra. But we've built a great life. So what does it matter right. if yeah, like, you guys nailed yeah. it, if they need it for something? And the same goes with college. If, if some of my children are going down a path where college makes financial sense because I didn't go to college, Kay didn't go to college, we both learned skills, we learned trades, we built our own businesses, we worked for other people, we made our way in the world creatively and confidently. Um, okay. But... If one of them does, if let's say one of them wants to do something like become an engineer and they need to get that the college ed, ed credentials, they'll learn the algebra to do it. <laughs> There's mm. amazing what you can learn on YouTube. And, right? right? Yeah. You can learn anything and yeah. they'll get there and they'll be self-motivated, self-driven. I think, Lacey, I think you touched on this before. People who go through the public school system, you're so busy being being scolded pressured, gold starred, attaboyed, right? Your whole path is constantly, uh-oh, don't fail. Here's your gold star. Uh-oh, don't do that. Here's your gold star. When you suddenly at 18 are like, okay, what am I going to do with my life? How many 18-year-olds are like, oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I want to do with my life. What do I get a gold star for? I guess I'll do that. Whereas yeah. <laughs> if, if for the, you know, from three or two years old to the time they leave your home, whenever they decide to, or whenever you, you say it's time, um, yeah. if they've been learning the, that whole time how to be curious, learn about a thing that they're driven, go beyond. The other day, my son, you, you're talking about Legos. My oldest, he has, uh, he'd been building Legos since he was little. And he, I taught him how to do like little stop motion with your Legos yeah, well, and make videos. Yeah. And he started making some videos. And you know, you teach your kid a thing you're good at. I, I like making videos. That's why I have a YouTube channel. And you teach him all your tricks. And then he showed me a video he made the other day. And it happened. I went, how'd you do that? <laughs> I make my living making videos. And he stumped me. I was like, how? And he had a secret. He had a trick that he had used to make a stop motion. He had a little character falling, like free falling. And I was like, how'd you do that? And he said, oh, I took a little clay and stuck it to the back of it and just moved him down the set. Like, he figured it out without, shocker, anybody else to teach him. So yeah, yeah. whatever. That's the most satisfying part of parenting. Isn't I think it? Watching your kid do something better than you. Like that's happened several times with Naomi. She's a musician. She plays the violin. Oh, she cool. She's a ballerina. And to watch her do these things that I could never do. I mean, I, yeah. I play violin, but she plays way better than I ever played. <laughs> And it's, you know, that's really gratifying. It's kind of when you, I feel like as a parent, you feel like you've arrived. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm like, all right, I'm good. Like, yeah. yeah. I get, she's got one skill that's better than me. Like, you know, or multiple skills. <laughs> multiple, yeah. 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 Drew, Anyways, yeah. That, that right there, what you just said, like, I think you nailed something really, really big there, right? And that's kind of like our goal as homeschool parents. When you see your kids start to pass you and then you feel like, okay, I've arrived, right? yeah what are they now why like why do you feel that way because i know it clicked with me instantly but like why do you feel like okay yeah good that's what i want to see i i think it's almost like a just like 
um, kind of pushing them ahead of you. Like Lacey and I have talked about this, like kind of one of the cruelties of life is like the older you get, the more wisdom you get, but you can't go back and redo your mm. life. So it's like the legacy almost of, you know, being able to impart wisdom beyond yourself, you know, like uh, leave a legacy of Yeah, wisdom. I think as homesteaders too, we're really like, we like to see things happen, right? Like we like to gr- plant a garden and get fruit. Like, you know, yeah. like we really like to watch the transformation of something. It's just a part of like how I think homesteaders are wired. And when you have a child, <laughs> it's not always as quick as that, right? Like It's almost like an apple tree, you know? Like yeah. You, the, when they hit that point, it's like your first apple from the apple tree. Well, you, know? you make all these sacrifices along the way that you, uh, I wouldn't say are begrudging. They're just kind of like you just do them without even really thinking about it. And you don't even think about the outcome. You just think like, oh, today it's music lesson today, day, or today it's, you know, taking ballet, or today, you know there's these things that we do and that we just kind of, it's like water dripping. You don't expect the waterfall to be so, (laughs) sorry to cry. Um, (laughs) I don't know, just so beautiful and and also out of your control in the end. Like I I can't really take credit for her. doing her thing and for for god creating this beautiful thing you know like i only just every day kind of showed up and as parents and even as homeschoolers or as public schoolers all we can really do is just show up and be the support system as our children go through this life right we we really can't take credit for any bit of it because the truth is yeah she practiced her violin with her whole heart but there are kids who just don't right like there are kids who you know, make Lego videos, right? Like there, it's just finding what that is and, and, and watching it unfold is, is an honor that every day doesn't feel like an honor. Yeah. Right. So, um, so I think that satisfaction of seeing something happen, um, it's almost out of your control. Is yeah. 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 I gotta say, I I love that. I've never heard that before. That like idea that these are trickles, little drops of water forming a, a waterfall that is both beautiful and out of your control. Like what a better, that's such a good illustration for like raising kids who then just poof, off they go. Yeah. Lo- I love yeah. that. I'm going to steal that, Lacey. That's so good. <laughs> okay. That's All so right. good. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you know, I, I was listening to a show I listen to a lot. I li- I'm a big fan of Jack Spierko. I don't know if you guys have ever listened to Jack's show. Uh, and he's big on homesteading and also homeschooling. And the other day I was listening to an episode and he talked about as parents, we say all the time that we're raising children. And mm-hmm. he said, that's wrong. You're not raising children. He says, you're raising adults. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jack's at the point now where he had a stepson who's now an adult and he's got grandkids and everything. So he's a little bit past uh, us as far as the raising adult. He actually has an adult that he raised. Um, but I thought if the point was, we're not raising children. The goal is not to have an 18 year old baby. Uh, it's to have a, you know, 18, 19, 20 year old young adult who is <laughs> confident. I don't want to get cheesy with it, but like confident, creative, right? They can handle the world that yeah. is crazy yeah. that is being thrown at them. They have that critical thinking where they can say, oh, you know what? I'm going to do this, but this might not work. So I should also have a backup. Um, and I feel like if we realize that one thing Jack talked about in a show was every year as they get older, you need to have basically less rules for them because eventually Mm -hmm. they do. They're that waterfall that you can't control, right? And off they will go and there's nothing you can do to stop whatever they want to do. At that point, Mm -hmm. they're just going to be their own human and you're just going to either admire the beauty or be afraid of the destruction, right? Because the yeah. truth is it can go either way right. or a little bit of both. Uh, <laughs> but that, when you, Drew, when you said like, when you suddenly see them passing you in something beautiful and amazing and it, it makes yeah. you think, okay, I've made it, right? Yeah. I don't have, you guys have an older, uh, actually a couple older than me. My oldest mm-hmm. is 12. 
but just these little moments that as my 10 and 12 year old are starting to become these young adults yeah. and get it really into their things that I can't teach them, right? Uh, yeah. My daughter's learning to play piano. Now I'm very musical, but I can't read music. My daughter can read music and she can learn songs from reading music and I can't. So as I'm seeing my daughter and my son do these things that I can't do or my son making these videos and suddenly he's teaching me little tricks I didn't know before, <laughs> yeah. it's telling yeah. me, okay, you know, we're not there yet. They're 10 and 12 and I don't want them to be there yet. But when that day comes, I, my, my hope, and that's these are little glimmers that they'll be able to handle the weird crazy world we're in now and however much worse it may be in five six years down the line yeah oh. let's not go down that trail yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting because like you say like his idea of like pulling back the roles and i like that but i will say like as they get older like 17 going into 18 like it gets also more terrifying like yes like, man, oh, driving let's not yeah, talk about like, driving driving yeah. and like they're you know like the other day she's at a friend's house she's the sweetest uh, girl ever but she's like how long can I stay there and I'm like I, you know really there's no reason you have to come back like anytime soon like just hang out but she's like really I'm like yeah just have fun and it but it's just like as a parent you're like wait no come back yeah uh -huh. like don't go yeah and it's just like it's oh yeah it, it prepare yourself for it. it it's tough but like and then I think about my parents and like if they knew half the stupid stuff I was doing like, <laughs> <laughs> at that age like they were, I, I wish i didn't know how right I, yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know we have built our lives you guys and us very very similar where we can enjoy yeah. this but you guys already said it and we say it all the time like let's say you made it this far in this episode you haven't been offended to the point of all right i'm not listening anymore <laughs> you haven't oh, like right you haven't like oh I, these people are crazy um you're like, you know what, this sounds great, but like, I have to go to work tomorrow. Maybe you're a single parent. Uh, maybe yeah. you're, you know, right. Maybe you're doing it by yourself. Maybe you, you're a couple, but you both have to work right now. You both got full-time jobs and financially you're in a position, right? And you're like, I can't, I, I can't homeschool my kids. Any yeah. advice for those people who at the end of this episode might be like, you know what, I, I'd love to, but this is still dreamland. I can't do it. Any advice for them? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think this is a really important question. And um, I think it's true for both homesteading and homeschooling. It's a frame of mind. I mean, it's not like, you know, if we had to send our kids to school, I would, <laughs> it would be really difficult for me just because of, you know, the freedoms that I know they have and, and that they would lose. But ultimately, like our home is a sanctuary, right, for a lot of different reasons. It's a sanctuary, not just for our children, but for us as well. And, and, it's a sanctuary of freedom of thinking. It's a sanctuary of um, opportunity. It's a sanctuary of like every idea. I hope we give a fair shot and we um, encourage, you know, that creativity, that open mindedness, that uh, pursuing of dreams. And that can happen regardless of what you guys do during the day, like when you're apart, because there are times when we're apart from our kids too. Now the oldest one is working three days a week. And when she comes home, she knows she's in a place where she can return to that realness of herself, you know, and, and, yeah. and then, and explore it too, and push that envelope. And that's what makes homeschooling work. You know, if you're, if you're just schooling at home, you know, I think, and you know, maybe that works for you, but if you're just, you know, bringing desks and I think every homeschooler goes through this phase where we're like, Oh, we have desks and fresh pencils and blah, 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 you know, like all of the right materials yeah. and the curriculum replicating and school at home. replicating the system yeah. at home, you know, that is a different mentality, but the mentality we have is just of, um, you know, it's taken us a bit to really get into the groove and we fall out of it, you know, but, um, and it's the same for homesteading, you know, homesteading is a frame of mind. You might not be able to grow all your own food, but you can, you know, maybe you can can some of the tomatoes from the farmer's market. Maybe you can know your local farmer in a more intimate way. Maybe you can go volunteer there and experience dirt in your fingernails, right? Like that is a lifestyle choice. You don't have to commit so like overwhelmingly. Too. Well, I think, yeah, like that brings me like to the idea of like we commit to community. Like our, yeah. our number two things like to survive on a homestead is water and community. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> and you can do that no matter where you are, you know, like connect right. into that community um, of it, maybe homeschool families, but, or of just like, you know, 
other things that your child can do that can grow Enhance their, their, their learning. Yeah, their zone of genius. Like help them find that yeah. wherever you're at. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know when I actually had a conversation recently with a really good friend. We were talking about homeschool and and uh, this friend of ours was saying, you know, growing up, she her mom couldn't have done it cuz uh, her dad died at a young age. And it made me think when we talk about this, uh, I don't want people listening to be ever thinking like that I think you should tomorrow if you're not doing this, do it, right? Like tomorrow, leave school. Right. And so it made me realize like, you know, <laughs> when we give the advice of you should homeschool your kid, here's why we do it, here's how we do it. It, it is a transition, right? It is a, especially if you've already started public schooling. It's one thing if you have a two-year-old and, and your wife's already on board and you're building your life beforehand. But if you're not there yet, and if you're listening to this episode and you're like, oh man, I, I'd love to, but nah, I can't, right? Well, it doesn't have to happen tomorrow. The things you guys said is mm-hmm. so good is you can still make your home a place of advanced learning in their passions, Right. Maybe helping yeah. them realize there's life beyond those school walls. And okay, you're getting a, a, a C in math. You know what? Honestly, honey, I'd get a C in that math class too. So let's focus on the things you're really good at. After school, we'll go and dive yeah. no into your passions. No one in your future life will ask you about that. What about that permanent <laughs> record though, right? They're going to find it. <laughs> but you know that idea of like, if you can't homeschool completely, that doesn't mean you should just give up on being involved in their their learning and their passion. Help fuel that fire. And then what you guys said, tapping into that community, you know, make a bridge. If your goal is to actually 100% homeschool your kid, that may take years, right? That may actually take years. But if that's your goal, it's like you said, it's like homesteading. If you want to be self-sufficient and you're listening to the Homesteady podcast, you're listening to the Schoolhouse Life podcast, you're like, that's it. I'm going to be self-sufficient. I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to buy a tract of land. I'm going to be self-sufficient next year. You're going to die, <laughs> right? You're like, it's never going to work. You're going to starve to death. But you, you definitely could raise chickens next year, right? You could absolutely right. buy that land and raise yeah. some chickens. So yeah. maybe next year you can't do it all yourself. Is You mentioned it. Is there a co-op? Is there a group of, maybe not even an official co-op, is there other homeschool parents where you could maybe arrange one a week? And then, right. you know, uh, how much for you guys, I know for us, learning doesn't just happen from, you know, 8 a.m. to f- to 3 p.m., right? right? Like, okay, maybe you work all day, but are there hours in the evening where mentally you're there and you're able to help? And if not, is there somebody else in your circle? A- and one last thing, I don't think we touched on it, but I know certainly you guys have probably experienced this over the years too. I don't, th- I'm not homeschooling my kids cause I think I know everything better than everyone. <laughs> mm-hmm. I yeah. recognize, Hey, you got a knack for that. I mm-hmm. can't teach you. You might learn some on YouTube, but let's find you someone who can teach you further. Mm-hmm. It, it, yeah. it, the public school did provide me with a couple contacts who got me further in my education, but mm-hmm. also so did people I learned skills from, People I learned, uh, one of my good friends at, I mean, I was already technically an adult, but he was really, really good at videography. He was way better than me. He was younger than me, but he was way better than me at making videos. And he taught me so much about how to get beautiful looking shots and how much have I used that on my channel now, right? And the audio quality on my podcast, he taught me a lot about that too. So, you know, being the enabler, maybe we can't teach our kids everything. Maybe we can't teach them hardly anything with our schedule and where we might be at in life. But could we then be the vessel that connects them to the people who can help them, which, which may be beyond the government run schools and probably let's be honest, probably are beyond the walls of the government schools. So Awesome. Well, awesome. I actually want to add something because I feel like there is even within that a little bit of a like a pressure because I feel like sometimes I'm missing opportunities for my children, you know, like, oh, no, you know, I'm not taking her to gymnastics, although clearly she should be a gymnast. You know? <laughs> um, but I think one of the most important things as adults that we can do for our children is just be learners ourselves. And I will tell you that I can complain about my my um, my schooling, but my parents have always been learners. They've always they put that. Uh, and here I go again, I cry a lot. It's um, just normal for Lacey. But um, <laughs> I, they they learn. They constantly are picking up new things. My mom a couple of years ago decided she was going to take up painting and now she's a painter. And, you know, I mean, I think that when we live that way, it's like, it's like, how do you teach a child to, to read? I mean, you 
you read, right? Like if you learn, they will also realize that learning is yeah. valuable and yeah. fun and what life is really about. And I think that is what sets the groundwork for life as a schoolhouse or that schoolhouse life thing that we're, you know, I think is we're so passionate about is, you know, we don't, ha we don't even have to make sure our kids have all of those doors open. You know, we just need to make sure they know there are doors to open. Right. I think yeah. is really yeah. the most important thing. So and if good. we're opening doors for ourselves, they're watching, you know, and they'll, that is, I think the lighting of the fire that they'll continue to burn as adults. So, um, so anyway, yeah, it, all of that. <laughs> You know, I love your guys' approach, and I, I really like how it's right there. Listening to your podcast, that introduction is life is a schoolhouse, right? So if other people want to follow your schoolhouse life uh, and, and see how you guys incorporate, again, we really focus on homeschool today, but you have a ton of great homesteading content as well. And in the future, for sure, we can get you guys back on and talk about cows and sheep and all the other good stuff you guys are up to. Uh, my audience, where can they learn more about you guys? Uh, yeah, schoolhouselife.com is probably the most efficient yep. place to find us. Yeah, um, that's got the link to the podcast and more information about what we have going on. A couple on of great regular. freebies, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We have a, um, a, a homeschooling freebie that we put together, um, sort of just an overview. It's just a single sheet, but it's really kind of all our favorite resources and, um, and steps to kind of moving in that direction. Um, and we are going to set up a link for that at schoolhouselife.com backslash homeschooling. Um, and we actually even put together a really incredible resource that um, is very affordable. It's only $9 and it's, um, we call it the homeschool open house. And it was this summit that we put together a couple of years ago when everybody was like, you know what, it's, I'm not putting my kid in an online school, we're going to homeschool. And they all wanted to know all the things all at once. And I, that resource is really still my favorite because it's such a broad, diverse group of, of folks who share um, how they do things and their favorite tips. And um, it ended up being was, about a three-day conference. Yeah, it was like 16 homeschoolers from all over Instagram that we just gathered up and mm -hmm. picked all their brains and put it all together. So that yeah. that's a super cool resource Incredible. for anybody that's thinking about Specifically homeschooling. for homeschooling, yeah. yeah for sure. Awesome, awesome. And I know you guys, uh, for those who are listening to our podcast, you guys are very active as podcasters. So if you're if you're finished up with the latest episode of Homesteady today and you're like, oh man, I'm out of out of my good homesteading podcasts, uh, we'll have links to your guys' podcasts as well. And uh, if you're YouTube watchers, you guys also share your podcast on your YouTube channel. I love when I see the both out there because I know for us, we have people who listen to the podcast and then we have people who watch it and they don't want to cross over and hey, I don't care as long as they're listening or watching. So. All right. <laughs> Awesome. And, and then, like, for our audience, how what's the best uh, way to check you guys out? Yeah, you know, st starting at our website's a great one, too. If you go to thisishomesteady.com, uh, there we have a button on the homepage that says join us. If you click that, you'll get on our email list. That way, you'll get, I'll send you the email list, I'll send you the podcasts, the videos, the courses. We actually have a free Start Homesteading Today video course. For all the people out there who are like, I want a homestead, but I just don't know where to start, that mm -hmm. is a great place to start. It's a free video course. All you do is sign up with your email and you take a quick little survey that asks you what you want to learn, what you're interested in, and that helps us shape our show around the things you want to learn. So it's a win-win for everybody. Um, but if you search Homesteady, if you like YouTube, we have a, two videos a week about that we put out. We are raising all our meat on our homestead. We do some vegetables and other stuff too, but mostly we're into the livestock. We have a homestead dairy, so you can see stuff going on there. We have the podcast, which uh, usually we do straight up interviews. Today was a different format, but I really, really enjoyed this. So once in a while, I think I'm gonna plan something yeah. more like this. And uh, so you can check out the podcast. You can find us on Instagram. I post some pictures and a lot of Instagram stuff's so audience feedback and I have people help us out with like our titles and our thumbnails. I do polls and stuff. So it's very interactive, the Instagram Yay, stuff. So whatever you like, if whatever your stuff that you like to have, why as far as social media, just search home study and we'll be there. But the website is a great place because then you'll get it all and you'll get the bonus stuff too, which is our free video courses and stuff. So. I hope you enjoyed that episode as much as I did. 
It was really nice to have this discussion with another couple working hard to do the best they can at raising their kids on the homestead. Like I said at the beginning, homeschooling, it can get people into fights. Uh, talking about educating our children, we all feel very passionately that we're doing what's best. Otherwise, we wouldn't do it, right? If we didn't believe it, what, it's what was best. And uh, when two different people disagree on what's best, unfortunately in this world, a lot of times it becomes a screaming match. So instead of doing that, let us know what you think in the comments. If you, your opinion is different from ours, no worries. We can talk civilly, uh, share different ideas. Even if you prefer public school to homeschool or vice versa, let us know what you think. We'd love to hear your opinions. And if you would like us to cover the homeschool subject more, let us know in the comments below. Schoolhouse Live podcast covered homeschooling in another episode. Uh, click here or in the description of the podcast to check that one out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.